Alright, well, I will spoil it. It is Lights Out by David Sandberg from 2016, which I don't hear talked about often. And, I mean, I guess because it's not a great, great movie. But there's some interesting ideas in here. And I feel like some of this... When did Malignant come out? And now I can't remember when Malignant came out. Pretty sure it was after this movie. Let me see. It feels like very similar to Malignant in some ways. Yeah, that was 2021. So this seems like it was kind of like an early idea for Malignant, like an outline. Because this has the whole, and I don't even remember Malignant much, but this has the whole, like, twin that's in the person's head. I think that's what it was in Malignant. And this is like a a friend that she knew in the mental institution, like, earlier in her life. And this movie does have some creepy stuff in it. And I'm pretty sure most of the effects in here are practical. Because I know they use, like, the person who played the... Um, and we don't know exactly what she is. Is she imaginary? Is she, like, she has to be because she's dead. Unless those records are, records are fake or were fake. And then she's just actually living down in the basement in her house. I mean, I think that's a little too out there. but So it leaves it open, though. It doesn't really explain it, except for saying that she died. So I'm not sure what to think of all that. And she, you know, at the end, we kind of get a semi-answer to that because she dies because of somebody else dying. So in the late way that she's in her head, how it all works, I have no clue. So let's talk about Lights Out. I'm starting it now. If anyone hops in, I'll give a, a timestamp if somebody wants to uh, watch along. And David Sandberg, I really like um, Annabelle Creation, which is the other movie that he directed. I'm not sure if he directed anything after that, but I absolutely love Annabelle Creation, and that's one of the few in the franchise, the whole Conjuring universe, that I do enjoy. Pretty much right behind The Conjuring 2 is Annabelle Creation. So, same guy directing. But it's been years since I've seen this movie. Uh, Atomic Monsters production. But this definitely, this movie, I remember feeling like an outline for Malignant. Like what would become Malignant. Same type of idea. Except that one, James Wan actually produced. I mean, I directed this one, he did not. That louder. Yeah. So we have the whole opening with uh, the dad. Um, what the hell is the kid's name? Martin? Something like that? Let me see. I gotta, if I remember right, I think it's Martin. But he's on the computer talking uh, to the kid, saying that he's going to get his mom better. And he's saying that the kid's saying that she's talking to herself again. And I really like what this movie does with depression. Because I feel like even if people, like people who are diagnosed with depression, myself included, understand and will relate to this movie completely. Right? But I feel everybody's been in that state of depression, whether long lasting or short. It doesn't matter. I'm pretty sure everyone's been, been in that state of mind before at least once and can relate to a lot of the themes in this movie. Now, this woman who plays the secretary or whatever for the dad, she looks very familiar. 
I don't know where I've seen her before. She almost looks like the actress who plays the secretary in uh, uh, Breaking Bad, the secretary to Saul Goodman. But I can be completely wrong on that, but it does look like her a little bit. Another thing I think this movie does a great job with is the fact that it knows, like David Sabo, James Wan, they they know that pretty much everybody has a fear of the dark, whether a childhood fear or a current fear. Everybody at some point has been afraid of something lurking in the dark, of something, you know, the boogeyman being in the closet or under the bed. Everyone has felt like that or had that fear. And they play amazingly on that throughout this whole movie. Like this opening scene here with the secretary, she's in the room and she keeps flicking the lights off and Diana is the name of the whatever the fuck she is appears there and then she turns the light on she's gone turns it off she appears again like three or four times and it looks awesome because they used a suit on the, the actor or actress i forget i think it was the actress who played uh, diana and when they would flick the lights off it was kind of like a green screen suit so that like she could stand there but when they shut the light or turn the lights on mixed with the suit kind of like cgi a little bit it would make her disappear uh, then she'd be there when the lights are off again. They did a really good job with that throughout this whole movie. And she is genuinely creepy, Diana. And you don't see much of her, except for her outline, throughout this whole movie. But damn, is she actually... She's pretty fucking creepy. Now we have the father leaving Diana. Which I'm sure he knows about Diana. Because he said that he was working on trying to get uh, you know, uh, his ex-wife better. And that first shot of Diana that uh, the father sees when she's just crouched in the lights... That looks so cool. That looks so scary. Uh, then how he flick, he like tries to get the motion lights on again. Uh, then she's closer in the next light, and then it turns off again. That she's in closer again. Well, like you can do so much with with a creature like this that only appears in the darkness, and they do a lot of cool things with it in this movie. This is gonna probably go up on this rewatch for me. I remember liking it, but not thinking it was anything great. But damn, does Diana look fucking terrifying in this. And, like, the eyes are, like, kind of wide apart. Like, it's weird. And that's when he realizes he, she won't step in the light. But she can basically shut the lights off. Like, so it doesn't really matter, right? Because we see her shut the lights off or kill the power like multiple times in this movie, if I remember correctly. I always love when there's like a ghost thing or demonic entity or something like that, and somebody always grabs like a bat. Or a knife or something. It's like, come on, what are you going to do? Like, if there's a ghost or a demon, you think a bat is going to do anything against them? I don't know. Just as an aside, as usual. I remember there being very good sound design in this movie, too, which is not uncommon for a James Wan produced film or directed film. Oh, that's right. You just get sucked into the darkness. And Oh, and his eye is, like, ripped out. Well, apparently, Diana like, likes uh, taking people's eyes. And then the title card lights out. That's cool.
I remember really liking Becca, her name is, right? Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's Becca. Awesome character. I forget the actress who plays her, but she is, uh, she does a good movie. I like her whole dynamic with her boyfriend here. That's like kind of her boyfriend, but it's not really her boyfriend. And like, she won't admit that she has feelings for him, but she does. Like, I love, I love their whole little dynamic. And I love that he turns out being a stand-up dude. Like, he's not a douchebag. He doesn't turn out being a dickhead. Like, when shit hits the fan, like, he does run away for a bit. And you think that he's running away, but he comes back with the fucking... I, I really like his character in this. He pretends to snore to fall asleep there because she won't let him sleep over her place. That's funny. Yeah, they have a great they have a great uh, chemistry together in this movie. I see the red light like flashing every now and often, like now and then through her uh, window. Reminds me of the Seinfeld episode when Kramer has the red light from the chicken place shining through his apartment and. And he can't fall asleep because of it. That's funny. I don't think I'd be able to fall asleep with a red light shining in and out of my room either. I like this whole banter with them, with her saying, with him saying, "Why don't I leave a sock here? Like just one sock." And then he tries leaving it there, and she finds it like when he's leaving, and she throws it at him out the window. It's cute. It makes you care about these characters. Like she knows like right away that he put that sock somewhere. <laughs> like she's not an idiot. She throws the sock down. That's funny. <laughs> He's like so close. Like he almost, almost was able to get that sock there to stay. And that's when we get the picture of the reveal that she's the sister of the kid from talking her dad at the beginning. I want to say Martin is his name, but I don't know. That sounds weird. I remember her name was Becca. That sucks, man. This kid was just talking to his dad, and his dad was saying he's gonna help his help the mom be better again and get better. And then it's the father dies. That sucks. And this kid's gotta live with that, and then go through everything that he goes through, like what back in after this. That's fucking torturous. So we see the kid at home with his mom and we hear his mom talking but we find out that it's well we know it's to diana eventually but we think she's just crazy at first talking to herself or people who are not there But even though they, I think they do a, good, a decent job with portraying depression in this movie that the mom suffers from, I mean, I'm sure depression can get that bad that you're hallucinating. But I feel like she has to have some other diagnosis or diagnosis over, over on top of the depression. Because well, most people with depression aren't talking to people who are not there or talking to people that are dead or 
like having hallucinations like that. So she might definitely have other diagnoses on top of the depression, for sure. And what is that? I think it's her closet, right? Or does that go to the basement? I think it's her closet. But, like, just the whole fact that that adds, like, another thing in the house to be terrified of for this kid. And then he sees Diana, like, creeping, like, into frame, like, in the door. Dude, this kid is, has every right to be so terrified as he is throughout this whole movie. Jesus. Hey, what up, Yara? How you doing, man? Talking about the movie Lights Out from 2016. Have you ever seen it? It is currently on Netflix. This kid is fucking terrified right now. If you haven't seen it, it's about this kid who um, lives with his mom. His mom has mental illness, has uh, severe depression, and she has an imaginary or not so imaginary friend. Have you ever had a paranormal? I have not had a paranormal experience. I remain skeptic on it, but I, I'd like to. Like a good one. Not. <laughs> Not like a fucking demonic possession or something like that. But I'm open to having an experience. I just haven't had one. Have you? Actress has really blue eyes. The one who plays Rebecca. His name is Martin, the kid. All right, so I was right. I don't know why it sounded weird for you. Know. And then we have Child Protective Services steps in here because Martin is falling asleep every day for the last few days during class. Because this poor kid can't fall asleep at home in the dark. Because of this demon or ghost friend of the mother's, Diana. And she looks creepy as shit in this movie. I love the whole dynamic between them two, the sibling dynamic. With uh, Becca and Martin. The CPS lady nails it right there when she said to Martin that, like, you're going through a hard time right now with your mom, and the hard part must be that you can't talk to your mom about it. It's her mom, his mom's the one that's sick. That's right, that's true. And then we start to find out that that's why Rebecca left so young and moved out was because of Diana, mom's friend. And this whole cycle would, is just continuing again with Martin. Same thing that happened to Becca. And that happens frequently with people, families that have somebody who are you know, a parent that has, or anyone who has mental illness, that has to take care and be the guardian of other people. You see those people, the kids usually, like, start to run away from that. And it's sad, and it, for both parties, like, of course. But, I mean, the kids don't deserve having to deal with that. And at the same time, the person who's sick doesn't deserve being sick and feeling like that. So they portray that well in here.
<laughs> I like when the boyfriend says, like, when he starts coming in with them, and she's like, you're not coming in. It's like, why not? Because she's crazy. And that's when Martin name drops Diana for the first time. And he tells her that she knows what he's going through and that she's had a lot of nightmares over Diana when her dad left. Yeah, I love their whole their old sis uh, or their sister dynamic in this. how dark she keeps her house to like every shade is drawn like it's absolutely so dark in this in this house so she can be with her friend diana and no wonder this kid can't this kid can't fucking sleep it's terrifying in this house I like how Becca could instant, instantly knows when the mom's off her meds. Say, how long have you been off your meds? As curious as kids are, this kid, as terrified as he is, still looks into uh, the creepy dark rooms and gets the shit scared out of him by Diana's silhouette. Say to your daughter, man, look how you turned out. <laughs> yeah, see, Becca says that uh, until she stops being completely manic, so she's bipolar, she's not just suffering from depression, or at least that's what she's diagnosed with. It's fucking disheartening, man. How Martin calls the antidepressants vitamins to his mom. Oh, it's okay, Carrie. Hey. Welcome to break. I went with lights out. Because I haven't seen this in a long while. And I'm actually enjoying it a lot more than I remember so far. Hey, Jamie. We're watching Lights Out by, uh, oh, what the hell was his name again? Same guy who, uh, uh, Sandberg, who did uh, Annabelle Creation. It was produced by uh, James Wong. Ooh, Event Sevenfold poster. I like their City of Evil album. It's on Netflix if anyone wants to watch along. I'll put a timestamp. Diana in this movie, like the, the friend, quote unquote, in the mom's um head, or not in her head, whatever she is, they don't really give an, an explanation fully. It's terrifying in this movie. What a creepy fucking creature. I was saying, I like how it plays on the fact that every one of us has been afraid of the dark. Like, at least at some point in our lives. 
afraid of the boogeyman in the under the bed or in the closet. I mean, this kid gets the shit scared out of him. Yeah, that's right. It was based on a short, Jamie. Yeah, you should watch it. It's a it's a, it's a decent decent to good uh, decent to good movie, and it might even go up on this watch. I really like the uh, the main actress here who plays Becca. I like the mom. The kid does a good job. He's not over the top annoying like uh, the kid in the Babadook. Even though I do love the Babadook, he's not like overbearing. And I like that they use mostly practical effects in this movie. Like um, I'm pretty sure the actress who played Diana wore, wore like a CGI suit. And when that way, when they turned the lights on, like she would disappear and then turn the lights back off and she'd reappear. Like that's cool. It's a unique way of doing it. Yeah, Teresa Palmer, that's her name. Yeah. This girl lives in an apartment that it's a red there's a business or something right nearby that shines the brightest red neon light through her window every like twenty seconds. Reminds me of the Seinfeld episode when Kramer has um <laughs> the chicken sign that's neon red and it keeps blinding him and he can't fall asleep and he's up for days. That's creepy too. She's like hearing like scratching sound and like when the light goes off you see diana like crouching there like that's so fucking creepy can you imagine seeing that every time the red light goes off and her eyes are so weird man her eyes are like this far apart like one ear and like one ear and they glow I would be terrified right now. That was a pretty good jump scare, actually. And she's like creeping on the ground, and then like she finally the light goes out again, and she's standing up, and she runs at her, and then she just disappears. It's a scary thought that just like being anywhere without light. This fucking creature, or dead woman, whatever she is. She's like the dead best friend of um, the mom from when she was in a um, mental institution, I'm pretty sure, if I remember right. Okay. Thank you, Carrie. No, oh, this is a kid, Martin. He's sleeping in the bathtub, man, with a flashlight right in his face. That's what this kid has to live with. And also, it's a nice depiction, and it's sad that this is how CPS works in our country. Like, the CPS lady shows up and says that you took your brother and says, like, she, he's living in an unfit environment. Like, the mom is off her meds. She's hallucinating, talking to people that aren't there. And she says, like, you can't just take them. Like, it's, that's just how it works. And that you'd have to go through and bring her to court and become a, the new guardian for him and you have to just stop your entire life and change it completely. And she's right. That, that, that sucks. That she has to come and bring him back to such an environment that he's sleeping in the fucking bathtub with a flashlight in his face. Alternative is he ends up in bringing him in the system in foster care. (laughs) 
I like when she says, are you ready to be a responsible guardian to background? He, she's like, I am. And then the well, CPS lady looks around and there's like all the band posters on the wall and then there's the bong on her counter. <laughs> That's funny. The Slayer poster also. No, I don't know what the rules are with Diana in this movie. Thank you, Care. Like she can just appear. It's not just in the house, so she can be at. She can come to the apartment too, because she was just here. And that's now we just see uh, Becca pull the rug up and see Diana's name carved in the ground so she can just leave the house where the mom is, I guess. And then the lights go out, and this is terrifying, man. I would be, I would never be able to sleep with the lights out again after going through the events of this movie. No way. Oh, that's right. We get a flashback to when uh, Becca was young, and she's drawing a whole picture that says "Dad, Mom, and Me," as in Becca. And then the picture just disappears. And then she finds it, and it has Diana drawn in it. Dude, that's so scary. And it's in the closet, just like I said. It's always fucking boogeymen in the closet or under the bed. Yeah, it's like a spirit latching on the mom. That's like what I remember because it's not like they try to make it almost sound like because they sh they sh I think she finds her records at the mental asylum a little later and she finds that um Diana was a patient there with like a skin disorder and she ends up uh that they tried like some type of experimental testing on her and then she died but like the mom tries like disputing that saying like they could they could have faked the rec they faked the records like to make it sound like she didn't die she's still alive so they try toying if i remember with like her possibly being alive still and that just she lives in the dark and she's gotten so good at living in the dark that she can like maneuver really fast around but then she like there's a lot of shit that just points to her being in the mom's mind and being like a spirit that manifested out of like her guilt that she did die I don't know. I gotta rewatch the rest of it, but I'm pretty sure it's that the, the latter. But like I said I love the boyfriend in this. Like if they all, she, I love their dynamic. Her, him, and Becca. But she's always like arguing with him that like. They're not really boyfriend and girlfriend, and then him, her saying that just like, All right, I like you a lot, and like, but you can't sleep over and stuff, and how he sticks fire through this whole ordeal, and like he leaves a little later on, if I remember right, and then like he comes back with the cops and shit, so like he says he could have left, like he could have said fuck this crazy family, I'm out, but he sticks fire through the whole thing. Okay, this is when I think this is when they uh they stop by the house and Becca looks for the uh files, finds the files in her mom's room. I would never step foot in this house again if you went through this. Yeah, I prefer that too. Just the spirit and darkness. It could be anything. Diana could be your own fear. Cinematography is great in this movie, too, which makes sense because Sam Burke did a great job with it in uh, Annabelle Creation, too.
We're all angry spirits who lurks in the darkness. The stream isn't really happening right now because I'm an angry spirit that's lurking in the darkness. And I was pining to be on the internet. Now this is when she finds the picture of Diana and her. And Diana just has like the Samara look with the fucking black hair covering her face with the umbrella. And I, if I remember right, she didn't even remember or know that her mom was institutionalized until now when she finds the records. Yeah, she suffers from a unique skin disorder that manifests itself in an extreme sensitivity to light. And that she had a history of violence. And she's been obsessed with one patient in uh, another ward, a young girl named Sophie, which is the mom. And even when she was alive, she sounds fucking creepy. She's listening to the tape between the doctor and uh, Diana from the mental institution. She's like, yeah, yeah, man. But she still sounds creepy as shit. And this is before she died. <laughs> this is just her as a human being. Uh, that's right. Then they did like some light therapy, and that's what killed her. That could take her pretty well, too. <laughs> like, she doesn't seem that freaked out about all this. Yeah, finally. Oh, shit, that's creepy. The boyfriend opens the, the shade. Finally, oh, get some light in this place. But then Diana's like silhouette is right behind him. They really did a great job with her design. She looks creepy as shit. Unfriended. I like Unfriended. I love that movie actually. There's another movie called Friend Request, but that was also called Unfriended. And uh, that's a it's not a good movie by any means, but it's fun. about some uh this really popular girl uh becomes friends with this like really like not attractive girl who like turns out to be like into like the occult or some shit and then she ends up dying and then she starts like murdering all her friends like as a ghost oh shit becca's stuck in the dark room After finding the drawing from when she was a kid with Diana drawn into it. Ooh, and Diana says, I won't be sent away again. Stay away. Oh, shit. And then she gets lifted. Becky gets lifted into the air by Diana. And Diana is like on the ceiling almost. That's cool. So now she definitely knows that Diane is real in some capacity. Now it's called uh, Friend Request. But it also had an alternative title called Unfriended. So it's confusing. It's not, it's not the movie Unfriended on the computer. No, I know, Jamie. But don't become a, a, a crazy ghost demon and kill me. I'm, I'm cool. Or Carrie. We don't want... Sometimes vengeance can get out of control. This has been a PSA from violence to getting out of control. Well, 
that's sad. And the mom and Martin, Martin, she says, like, you want to have, like, a, I want to get closer again to her son. And says, you want to have a pizza and movie night? And then with just the three of us, meaning Diana, too. And this kid's terrified. And he's like, could it just be you and me? And she says, we'll see. Damn. I would never go back to this house. I would stay with my sister the entire time. Are you serious? No, that's true. You were not violent, Jamie. That I know of. <laughs> Please don't kill me, angry spirit. Oopsies. Oh, poor, uh, I feel bad for this kid, man. He has to suffer throughout this whole movie. He's so terrified. What bat? I don't like bats. Well, I don't know. I don't know anyone who said like I fucking love bats, but you never know. You want a cool bat scene? Watch House House by the Cemetery by Lucio Fulci. That is a cool bat scene. Dude, Diana is so creepy here. She's like holding her son in the dark room and Diana's creeping like like this behind her. And that says she's gonna stay now and that I gotta keep the lights out and keep her head clear. Like this mom is out of oh shit. And then like Diana's like crouched on top right on top of the couch that they're both sitting on. That's fucking creepy, man. Ooh, and Diana like whacks the mom and smacks her onto the ground. Man, I feel bad for everyone in this movie and the mom too. Sucks that she's one that she has to deal with such bad depression. And two that she has this crazy psychotic ghost vengeance seeking spirit <laughs> attached to her. Yeah, she says here back to her boyfriend that uh, she didn't know that she was in the, her mom was in the institution. That's right, Carrie. We will, Jamie. What a nice whack from that. <laughs> Jamie, you're so funny. Oh, and then Martin knocks on the door and he's like has a backpack and like he's all ready to stay here. And his sisters, his poor kid. And then Becca tells Martin that something that no one ever told her that she believes him about Diana. It took Becca this long to realize she doesn't like the light. Like Martin comes out with it. She don't like the light. And then she seems like blown away by this. She couldn't tell that before? Come on. That's kind of stupid.
in this one we get the backstory on Diana, Diana that her dad killed herself and she was found in a basement locked up when she was 13 years old and she had a strange skin disorder that we knew already and there were stories about her that she was evil and that she can get into people's heads and apparently she got into Sophie the mom's head when she was at the hospital with her You know, she says here that Diana only comes comes around when mom is at her worst. So that's it. Still seems like she's just a manifestation of something within the mom, within Sophie, and that she shouldn't be real because Diana died. So I guess it's just the pent up something inside of Sophie. That only comes out when she's at her worst. Yeah, then she says, I think if we can get mom better and stronger, then we can break the connection between her and uh, Diana. Same here, always. Yeah, I wouldn't assume it's the boyfriend back with the food either. <laughs> she assumes it's, she hears oh, a knock on the door, so it's, it's the food. And then it's nobody. Brad, that's his name, the boyfriend. Brad. There's a lot of creepy scenes in this movie. And she comes back aside and Diana's they hear the scraping and Martin staring into that room. That's fucking scary. It's in the closet. To turn the light on and then open the closet. Smart move. Oh shit, Martin gets he got dragged under the bed. See? Under the bed. Told you. They lurk in the bed, under the bed, and in the closet. I keep saying, Jane, let's do a uh, a collab on David Lynch. I definitely want to talk more, David Lynch. Oh, now I want pizza. They're eating pizza here. That's not fair. Now I want some. This really shows how crazy the mom is, or how not crazy the mom is. And they're all sitting there eating pizza, and then Becca starts saying that Martin said your friend Diana was here an hour ago, and the mom's like, yes, <laughs> like she's my friend, and I'm like, damn. Yeah, see, this is where she says that Diana died, and she's saying, no, that's a lie.
So that's where they kind of try to throw in that it's possible that you could still be alive. So pick anything. Yeah, pick anybody. We'll do uh, anything. You can break out of the Twin Peaks community then. Think of literally anything, and I'm down. I'm down for anything with anybody. Well, most people, not everybody. And then the mom says here that ghosts aren't real. So is that just part of her? I'm guessing that's just part of her sickness. Because then the Becca asks, like, what is she? And we don't get an answer. My mom just walks upstairs. Boyfriend says he's staying for the night. And they're all staying the night. And they're going to try to figure out Diana. Banish her to the land of the wherever the fuck. No, it's fine, Jamie. Yeah, I collab with both of us. We go through. Let's do something. And then Becca says she'll clear out the bottom drawer for her boyfriend. After he tried sneaking the sock in earlier, and she found it. Oh, that's right. And then we find out that Diana killed Becca's dad. She asks here if she ever got any, if the mom any got any ever got any letters or any notes or anything like that from the dad and she said she really wishes she did and she never did then we find out that Diana killed him oh, I like that and the mom like uh, hands off a note to Becca and she reads it and says I need help so like now she knows that like she's being like kind of held captive by Diana. Oh, then the blackout. That's what I mean. She can just turn the lights out whenever she wants. So can't she just do that whenever and kill whoever she wants to? <laughs> okay, Carrie, thank you for coming by as always. So now they're in a dark ass house and they know Diana <laughs> thrives in the dark. I like how the characters are actually smart in this movie. Well, I mean, except for Becca here. She, <laughs> she goes down and turns the tries to fuck with the fuse box and Martin wakes up, she's not there, so he follows her down there. But then Brett, I remember he that he doesn't die stupidly. Like he tries leaving the house and Diana tries grabbing him and he's like up in the air and then he turns the, the lights on, on his car and it makes her disappear and drop him. That's cool. At least he has some type of intelligence. Dude, she looks so creepy with the eyes that are so far apart. Oh, bye, co-worker of Carrie. (laughs) 
we really have to retire this from all horror movies. The the person who gets dragged away off screen by a ghost or spirit, we've seen it too many times, retire it forever. It's, we, we don't need that anymore. We've seen that way too many times. And Brett, the boyfriend, is looking uh, and sees Diana. So she looks terrifying. They did such a good job with her design. Cell phone lights work, apparently. That's all the light you need, is cell phone. To shine it in Diana's direction. That's cool. That you hear you hear like footsteps or like hand steps, whatever she's whatever she's doing, of like all over the place. Uh, then his light turns off and she appears right in front of him. That's a cool scare. Yeah, he does use his car lights. Smart thinking. Oh, yeah, and the mom is going to take her antidepressants finally. And then Diana doesn't let her. He smacks her against a dresser and she hits the ground running. Oh, yeah, and they find the, uh, that's right, they find the little black light. And then she sees all, like, the handprints and stuff all over the basement. Kind of fitting that she, they imply she lived down here, Diana. And she was found at 13 years old living in, like, being trapped in the basement. So she's just used to basements, I guess. That's right, yeah, because she sees this older writing that she's put trapped down here in the dark, just like the hospital. That's a cool scare when she has the black light and she's going through all in the basement. She's looking at all the mannequins that are down there. And then she gets to the last one and it's real hair. And then you see like full on Diana's face. That's cool. And she has like, she looks a little fucked up because of the skin disorder she had. Then the cop, yeah, Brett comes back with the cops, and he's like, you need a flashlight, and these cops don't listen because they're stupid, and they just barge on in there. I remember they get, they get like, killed really fast. There's no point in them even coming. Yeah, the one cop gets <laughs> fucking immediately killed. Oh, yeah, that's cool. The other cop leans out, and Diana's, like, her eyes are gouged out, and Diana's holding the back of her head, like, she's controlling her like a puppet or some shit. That's a cool shot.
to. There's no fucking way I would faint from fright. <laughs> just, most people probably would. Just from seeing this thing, like, right up close, no way. Yeah, and she says, Mom, she killed Dad. But Diana killed uh, Becca's mom, dad. He didn't leave her. And we get the ending here. With her saying that there is no you without me. And she puts the gun to her head. And she sh blow Fucking dark ending, man. The mom blows her brains out. <laughs> and Diana was just leaping for her. And she evaporates out of the air. So I guess from killing herself, kind of like Fight Club, and <laughs> killing himself kills Tyler Durden. So killing herself kills Diana. Well, what a tragic ending, man. And then you breast outside holding the sun, holding Martin, saying, like, I got you. Like, damn. And that's it. It just ends with the uh, rest of the cops getting there. Which I don't know what the hell they're going to tell the cops. <laughs> like, what are they going to tell the cops? There's two dead police officers there already. So, what are they going to say? Like, who killed those cops? <laughs> are they just going to blame it on the mom? Say the mom went crazy. She's off her meds. She killed the two cops. Thank God you guys got here in time. Like, I can't see them saying that. So, like, what are they going to say to the cops? Well, how are they going to explain the two dead ones? I don't know. But this is overanalyzing. As I always tend to do. But, all right. So, Lights Out 2016. Thanks for the few of you who dropped in here. I know it's a Friday, so probably everyone is doing more exciting things, which uh, I don't blame. But um, this was a fun rewatch, actually. I actually, uh, this went up. It's a decent amount in my book. So, Lights Out. From David Sandberg, 2016. That is another mystery done. And going to try to have a video on scanners, David Cronenberg's, uh, out a little uh, later tonight. So wherever you guys are from, hoping you're having a good morning, afternoon, or night. I will talk to you soon. Take care, everybody. Now the awkward seconds till we don't know.